Hallelujah. God bless you. It's wonderful to be here with you. Good evening, everyone. Oh my God, Apostle Ufoma, well done. That was beautiful. That was wonderful. Praise the Lord for you. Praise the Lord for the wisdom that you carry. And the Lord will continue to move you forward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, I have very few minutes to speak and I have just five things I want to mention. Six, if I have the time. Just mention them very briefly. We're talking about wealth. We're talking about kingdom wealth. We're talking about finances. So which means that we're talking about money. So the first thing we need to know, like I said, I'll, I'll just be reeling five, six things to us very quickly. The first thing that I believe the Holy Spirit is saying to us, I've listened to all the great women of God, at least I've listened to about two of them, and it has been really explosive, really explosive. The first thing that I believe the Holy Spirit is saying to us this evening is purpose. What is the purpose of kingdom wealth? What is the purpose? So we know the first time wealth was mentioned in the Bible, it was mentioned as regards to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, when God was blessing him and God was telling him what he was going to do. He says, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I'll make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, curse those who curse you, and all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So that was the first time that wealth was specifically mentioned in the Bible. And we know that God was talking about he giving that blessing of wealth to Abraham. So we know that it is God who gives wealth. Praise the Lord. So God gave him wealth. And it was also apparent in Genesis chapter 13, verse 2, when the Bible says God gave him riches. Praise the Lord. And in Genesis chapter 13, the Bible also says, now Abraham was very rich. So Abraham was very rich and it was God that made him rich. So what is the purpose? The purpose of wealth is to be blessed of God so that we will not lack, so that we will not go hungry. Just like the Bible said in Psalm 34 verse 10, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But those who love the Lord and seek him will not lack any good thing. So God gives us blessings. He gives us wealth so that we will not lack. That's the most important <clears throat> reason. That's the number one reason that God gives us uh, wealth. Number two, so that we can be a blessing to others. And it's contained in that co uh, the covenant blessing that God released unto Abraham. He says, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing. So that's why God gives us wealth. Because it's commonly said that when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is, is inevitable. And we can easily abuse wealth and money and finances if we don't know why God releases wealth. Why he releases wealth. So that's the number one reason, so that we will not be in lack so that we'll have to eat and to drink. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Number two, so that we'll be blessings to others. And number three, so that we'll be independent of others. When Abraham was speaking and um, um, the king of Sodom was supposed, was saying that, oh, I want to give you this, he said, no. He said, no, I want to, I would, I, it's, I wouldn't take anything of you. He said, I've sworn an oath to God the God of heaven, that I will not accept anything of you, even a thread or the strap of a sandal, so that you will not be able to say, I made Abraham rich. So God doesn't want anybody to take the credit for our wealth. So that's why he gives us wealth. That's one of the purposes. So that we'll be independent of everyone. We'll be independent of everybody, independent of the world. So that we'll be independent of the world and we'll be dependent only on God. And then the fourth reason why God gives us great wealth is so that he will be our sustainer. 
he said, he said to Abraham immediately after Abraham spoke to the king of, Sod uh, of um, Sodom, immediately after he said to him, I'm not going to take anything of you because I don't want anyone to say that he made me rich. And God said to him, I am your exceeding great reward. I'm your sustainer. I'm your strength. Praise the Lord. Then number two. So we said number one, purpose. We need to understand the purpose of wealth. Number two, we need to also know that you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. The Bible says that we are called to serve God. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13, it says, And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So we are called to serve God. And Exodus chapter 23, verse 24 says the same thing. It says, You must serve only the Lord your God. You must serve only the Lord your God. So we are called to serve God, not to serve money. Je uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says, No man can work for two masters, for either he will hate one or love the other, or he will honor one and the other one he will ignore. You cannot work for God and work for money. You cannot serve God and serve money. So a lot of us are working for money. We're serving money. That's what the Bible says. If you work, whosoever you work for is the person that you're serving. So we're not called to work for money. We're called to serve God, to work for God, not to work for money. So now you wonder, how do we get money? It is God who gives money. He's the one who blesses you with riches and with wealth. And uh, Apostle Ufoma has said a lot about that. Praise the Lord. Then number three, money does not have the power to sustain you. The Bible says, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, Jesus speaking. He says, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Money is just a measure of value for goods and for services. Money expresses the value of material things. Money does not express the value of any human being. So money does not have the power to sustain you. Money cannot close your eyes at night for you to sleep. Neither can it open your eyes in the morning for you to wake up. Money can put food in your mouth because even if you have all the money in the world and you have all the food in the world, it is God that allows you to eat. Money cannot make you well. It is not possible. No matter how much you have, look at what, what is happening during this coronavirus. Look at, look at what is happening. It's not money that's making people well. It's God. It's God that is keeping us. He's the one that has the power to sustain us. Money does not have the power to sustain anybody. Not at all. Not, a, not, in, a, not in any form or manner. Number four, desire for riches and wealth can be a snare. Proverbs 23 verse 4 says, Labor not to be rich. Labor not to be rich. Cease from your wisdom. It says in, in uh, the contemporary English version, it says, give up trying so hard to be rich. Give it up. <laughs> the Bible says those who strive to be rich are never rich. They fall into temptations. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 9 says, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation. Those who crave wealth slip into spiritual snares. So we are called not to seek wealth, look for wealth, crave for wealth, search for it, serve wealth, work for money, but serve God, work for God, crave God, search for God, seek for God. Praise the Lord. And number five, we also need to understand that self-worth is not based on your net worth. And that's where a lot of us miss it. We believe that the things that we have, the cars, the houses, the clothes, the jewelry, those are the things that validate us and make people look at us and honor us. But the Bible says that that is not so. In Luke chapter 12 verse 15, he said, Beware, guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own says the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of the things that he owns. 
Life is not measured but by how much you own. So your self-worth is not determined by your net worth. Praise the Lord. It's not the money you have in your bank account or the, or the, or the, the cars or the possessions you have. Then number six, finally rounding off. Kingdom wealth, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about kingdom wealth. So wealth, what is kingdom wealth? Wealth that belongs to God to be used for God's purposes. So kingdom wealth is God's wealth for God's purposes in God's way. So kingdom wealth, this is what we're talking about right here. So kingdom wealth is not your wealth. <laughs> it's not your money. <laughs> You're just the custodian. When we're talking about kingdom wealth, where we're talking about God delivering kingdom wealth into your hands, then he has made you a steward. And the Bible says that stewards must be found faithful. So if we're going to be faithful stewards of God's kingdom wealth, we have to be responsible. It means that we have to know that we're caretakers. We're caretakers. You can't be in charge of a store or a shop and begin to eat the products, the things in the store. You will be charged for theft. So a lot of people are in charge of kingdom wealth and they're stealing. They, they are converting the kingdom wealth to themselves because if it is God's property, if it is God's wealth, then it's supposed to be used according to God's purposes, according to God's ideas and ideals. And the example I was giving the other day where we're talking about vessels in the, in the house of God, kingdom wealth says that these things belong to God. And you know that in the, old in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament, when the temple of God was there, all the vessels, all the riches in the house of God, everything in the house of God belonged to God. But there was no priest that could take one home to use it. All the abundance of God in the house of God. You remember when Ezra was transporting the treasures from the house of God? back to Jerusalem, they had to, they did a reckoning, they wrote down everything when they were by the river Ahava. It says write down everything so that when we get to Jerusalem we'll check that nothing is missing. That's God's property right there, it doesn't belong to anybody, it's not yours for the taking. God's responsibility toward you is in Matthew chapter 6, his responsibility toward you is to take care of you, to give you what to eat and to give you what to drink and to give you your shelter. It's God's responsibility. Nobody, we are not called, nobody is called on the face of the earth to come and work for food. To work for food is a curse that God put on Adam in the beginning when he disobeyed God. You remember it was God that planted the garden for him. God planted the garden and put Adam and Eve in it. That they could eat of everything. They could do anything they wanted in the garden. Eat, drink, do this, do that. It was God's largesse. Hard work, I will say that again. Hard work is a curse. Working for money is an anomaly. That is an anomaly, sorry, it's abnormal, it's an anomaly. That is not what we're called to do. God is our sustainer and our provider. We're supposed to work for purpose, work for God. God could call you as a doctor to work for him. He could call you as a nurse to work for him. He could call you as a teacher to work for him. He could call you as a lawyer, as a carpenter to work for him. God calls people in different professions to work for his plan and purpose, not so that they can eat. It is a curse to work, to eat, to work for food. We're supposed to work for purpose. It is God that sustains a man. What work was Abraham doing? And the Bible says he was rich in cattle. What work? Read. Can we please go back and read our Bibles? What work was he doing? It was God that was blessing him. As he was moving in the purpose of God, God was blessing him. To sweat before you eat is a curse. Go back to your Bibles. In Genesis chapter 3, when you curse, when you sweat before you eat, it, that's, that person is under the curse. So these are the six insights that um, I believe that the Lord wanted me to share with you tonight. And I believe the Holy Spirit will expand it in our spirits in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you.